Hello, my name is Chase Dingleheimer, and welcome to the news. Today, the only news we've got is that Andre Shidigel, everyone's favourite player at Neftan, has scored his first two goals for the club in a 3-0 victory over Lokomotiv Gomel. The first goal was a well-taken shot from way, way out, miles out, and he pounds that past the goalkeeper in fantastic style. The second one, the ball comes in from the right-hand side from Shubko. He puts it across. Shitty gel in the middle of the area puts it in the bottom corner. So, Shitty gel, congratulations on your first two goals for the club. You will soon become a club legend. Hello and welcome back to Around the Block. Hope you're all doing well today and you're looking forward to the final episode of this season. Obviously, we've had a very short season because we joined partway through the season with Maftan. So we've got the final two league games where hopefully we're going to finish in the top half, please the board and get ourselves ready for the next season, which is quite exciting. Once again, thank you ever so much for your support so far on this series. It is unprecedented. Thank you ever so much. If we can hit 250 likes on today's video... That would be marvellous. So that's the target, 250 likes. So first things first then, we have to go through the two fixtures that we had in between episodes. Now I believe that Chase Dingleheimer has updated you on one of those results. But before we get to that one, we started off with a 1-1 draw against a team called Sputnik. Quite the disappointing result I've got to say. If we click into it, you'll be able to see that we had, when it wants to load, if it loads at any point actually. If you just click on this goal, for example, penalty here, you can see on the, uh, on the top line on the screen, when it wants to generate the match report. This is, I should have prepared this earlier, shouldn't I? Like Blue Peter, I should have prepared this earlier. You can see we had two disallowed goals, but Rad Radzibov scored a penalty late on in the game to ensure a 1-1 victory in a game that really we didn't play particularly well, as you can see from the average ratings. But we did have two disallowed goals, so another day we would have won that game 3-1, for example. But last time out... A huge 3-0 victory against Lokomotiv Gomel with Andre Shitigel scoring two goals in that and Elvin Aliyev scoring the other goal in that game to beat them. 3-0 and Lokomotiv Gomel at the time were sitting fourth in the table. They've dropped to fifth in the table. That was a fantastic result, I've got to say. And it leaves us tenth in the table as things stand right now on uh, 32 points. However, some teams of us have played extra games. However... We have to win our next two games in hand, or our next two games essentially, to go to 38 points. And, and hopefully, the three teams, the brothers, will lose some of their games. And that's how we can get into the top half of the table. It's a massive ask, but potentially it's doable. Most importantly, though, we are ahead of Baranovici, Kimmick, and NFK in the table. Three clubs that we did apply for, and obviously offered a job at Kimmick as well. So as long as we can stay above those teams, that's fine. Lida are in a slightly different competition to us, really, because they are higher at the table. But hopefully next season, we'll be able to turn this around. The form we've had is incredible when you compare it to what went on before I came into the club. So, I mean, this is the form since, well, before I came into the club. This was the form. It was pretty terrible. Loads of losses, hardly any wins. And then I come into the club here for the Dinamo Brest game. Since then, we've only lost two games, we've drawn two and won the rest of them, which I think is pretty good going. Today, we're playing against Granite, who are 14th, and Volner, who are 8th. So hopefully, they are two games which we should be winning and getting six points from, fingers crossed. Now, at some point in today's episode, we should be getting this youth intake through. That should be coming very, very soon. It says every November, you get the youth intake pretty much. So that should come soon at some point in today's episode. So we'll keep our eyes out for that one. But as well as that, we've also got a full squad of players in on trial in the reserve squad right now. Sort of looking for next season players that we potentially could be signing to help bolster the ranks a little bit. This goalkeeper, who's 22 years old, three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. He could be a very good backup for us next season. So I feel like he's the goalkeeper we look to sign for next season potentially. He looks quite good from the reserves on trial right now. A few other decent players as well that we need to get a little bit more information about um, before we look to try and sign them. But a few players are oh, three-star current ability. You know, that's kind of what we're looking for, I suppose, to sort of bolster the squad a little bit and maybe try and get them some cheap contracts. So, fingers crossed a few of these players turn out good. I'm looking out for Artem Sitko. He looks like he could be a good player on that right wing to replace Moses. Of course, he's only in on loan this season. So, we need someone else on that right wing and Sitko could be the person for us. But of course, that is a little bit further in the future. We don't need to think about that too much. Today, we are playing a slightly different formation, a 4-4-2. And you're asking me, Tom, why are you playing a 4-4-2? I'll tell you why. Now, in the game against uh, Lokomotiv Gomel, uh, we had Moses, who was suspended. He couldn't play that game. And he counts as one of our under-20 players who have to be on the pitch. We've got to have two under-20 players on the pitch at all times. Now, he's one of three that we've got. He was suspended. He couldn't be on the pitch. The other two we have are Aliyev and Dimitri. They're the other two under-20 players. So they both had to be on the pitch. So we had to take off um, Abidemi 
and we had to bring on Dimitri as a, a striker alongside Aliyev to play a 4-4-2 formation instead. And we beat the team in fourth on the table 3-0. So I feel like perhaps a 4-4-2 is the way to go. It's Mike Bassett tactics at its finest, but we've got to do it. We're going 4-4-2. I know that he says something slightly different in the film, but if I properly articulate his quote, the uh, demonetization button might come out on the channel. So I can't, can't risk that. So that is why we have a slightly different formation for today's game. It's not massively different, but it seems to work very well in the previous fixture. So I thought we'd try it out today once again. The lineup then is uh, pretty familiar to you now, I suppose it should be. Uh, Sakovic is in goal with Polyakov, Borisov, Crazy and Shubko at right back. Uh, Radzibov comes in today because he is replacing the suspended Tamela, who's picked up a couple of yellow cards. So he's not playing today. Everyone's favourite Belarusian central midfielder, Shitty Jelt, starts alongside Zach, who are playing very well together, which is quite nice. And Moses starts on the right-hand side. And as previously mentioned, Dimitri and Aliyev, who keep scoring goals for us, which is fantastic stuff to see. Three goals in his previous three games, or previous four games. He didn't score actually in the 1-1 draw, did he? But three goals and four starts, I think, is pretty good going. So that's the lineup. Fingers crossed we get another victory today. So kickoff is upon us here today. Hopefully we are going to be picking up a massive victory against Granite. They are sitting in 14th on the table, so theoretically it should be a routine win. Apologies for the green screen behind me. Uh, the lighting in the room is a little bit weird and different today because it's actually quite light outside for a change when I'm recording. And I feel like that's interfering with the green screen, which as you can see is going mental and it's not it's not doing what I want it to do essentially. So I do apologize for this. In fact, there we go, that sort of thing. Let's see, look, it's just going a little bit weird. And I'm not entirely sure why, really. Um, that's, ooh, I brought it very close to me now. That seems to have fixed something a little bit. So... I'll try and keep an eye on the green screen. I know it's going to be a bit frustrating for you, but I, I'm not entirely sure how to fix it right in this very moment because I think it is just lighting issues in my room which is causing it. And there's nothing I can do about natural light coming through the blinds, which I can't really do much about. Either way, uh, we've just come to the goal to, to Granite, which wasn't great. I wasn't really watching either. So um, it says, what a goal down there. So I'm assuming it's going to be a very, very good one as... They hoof the ball down their left-hand side of the pitch in towards their, I presume, striker or something like that. He plays it into their number 10, who first time shot. It's a decent goal to fair. I wouldn't say, what a goal, that's amazing. But it's a it's a good one. It's a good one, I'll give him that. So 1-0 down, but hopefully we want to get straight back in there. And we do get straight back in there. Zach with a free kick and Radzibov at the far post to nod it back home. Back on level terms pretty instantly as well. Great free kick and unmarked at the far post. And the keeper way in bad position there so a great equalizer for us back straight in the game and we are on top of it as the stats show us here so hopefully we just sort of get hold of the game now and start to really push on and create a few more opportunities for ourselves in fact we're going to say get creative out there just for half time as well as Ali has been put forward from another free kick and his shot was very tame there should have done an awful lot better but he's a young striker he's going to make mistakes we've got to be prepared for that as Radzibov scores another one but this time it's offside unfortunately Radzibov looking very dangerous from set pieces. We need to try and utilise these because obviously this granite side can't really seem to deal with them too much as a corner comes all the way through and has given a penalty to granite. What for? Not a clue. That feels very, very unfair. Then number 14, who I can't pronounce, steps up to take it and fires it in the back of the net just before half-time. So we go down again. It's not great, honestly. It's a... It was a good, it was a decent penalty. Our goalkeeper seemed to jump in the air and not really move around much, to be fair, which is kind of frustrating, but I guess that's what's happened sometimes. Hopefully, we're going to see a much better showing in the second half. Neither of our strikers are playing particularly well out there today, so that's probably part of the, the big issue. We have got another striker on the bench uh, who we've not really seen much of at all, Yanachenko. Now, he's a, he's a pressing forward first and foremost. I feel, I feel like we've got to give him a go. Aliyev's not played particularly well. So let's bring Yanchenko on the pitch instead to be that pressing forward on attack. Dimitri can be a poacher instead. Let's try that. We've got to do something to try and get some goals here today. So that's obviously... In fact, I don't think I can do that actually, can I? Because I'm going to click confirm changes and we can take him off. Oh, we've got Moses on the pitch as well. We've got Moses on the pitch. So that's two under 20 players in Dimitri and Moses, isn't it? So that's okay. Yanachenko can come on, but Moses and Dimitri have got to stay on the pitch for the rest of the game now, which is slightly frustrating. Although Zanak puts a corner in the area, it's cleared, and Granite looking to cause a bit of a counter-attack by coming forward. They get it through to their number 10 striker, and he's saved a shot saved by Sakovic in goal there, but we need to be a little bit more switched on than that, I've got to say. The 4-4-2, not really working out for us today. Anton, on you come for uh, Shitty Gel, who, to be fair, hasn't played great, which isn't, it's not, it's not brilliant, is it, really? So, 
there's the other change that we'll make. I don't really feel like the other players can contribute that much to it, if I'm honest with you. Come on then, lads. Five minutes to go. Let's go really attacking. Or I can't. Why can't I click on the attacking button? What's gone on here? I didn't mean for this to happen. I've gone back to the 60th minute. Why has that happened live? I don't want this at all. Uh, we want to go very attacking. And we want to say, show some passion out there. Just grab an equaliser. That's all. Otherwise, we're going to lose a game. And that's not... We don't need... If we lose this game, we can't finish top half. And the board might get quite cross with me. As Dimitri gets it out to Shubko. Shubko into the middle. Radzibov waiting... Just about wins a penalty for us, which Radzibov is going to be taking himself because he seems to be the designated penalty taker. I need to probably set this up to it someone else instead. But Radzibov steps up to take it to grab an equaliser in the 95th minute. Does so. What a powerful penalty that was. That was fantastic. And he, he picked a, a point for us, but I don't think actually looking at the table, even if we win our next game, we're not going to get any higher than 10th position. So we've got to try and hold on to this 10th position now. High as possible. That's what we want to be. As only 50 fans turn up for this game, one away fan. That one away fan is treated to a nice 96th minute winner for uh, equaliser for us. Not the best of games, I'll give them that, but at least we didn't lose. That's the most important thing, we didn't lose. So yes, looking at the table, by the looks of things, Slonim have, they lost in the 90th minute, and they lost in the 60th minute, so actually Slonim have dropped down. They're three points behind, uh, ahead of us, so... We could head up into ninth position if Slonim lose and we beat Volner, but that's as high as we can go, ninth position. Theoretically, we could be slipping down to 12th, possibly, but that requires quite a big goal difference swing. What is quite exciting, though, looking at this, three teams are vying for two automatic promotion places, and Rook have played all 28 games this season for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why they've played 28 games and everyone else has only played 27 games, but they've played all their games now. So they are obviously relying on one of these two teams slipping up for them to get an automatic promotion place. Otherwise, it's that playoff relegation playoff for them. A promotion relegation playoff for them. That's what I was trying to say. For us, though, not a huge amount to play for, really, going forward, other than a bit of pride and trying to finish as high as possible. But we do have 12 days off now. A bit of international break before that final game of the season, which seems particularly odd. I don't know why they wouldn't just schedule it before him or before this point or afterwards. I don't know, but... Seems a bit weird. Hopefully in this time, though, we're going to be able to see the uh, youth intake come through. That's obviously the most important and exciting part of this episode. Uh, at, le at least in terms of we can't really win anything, so hopefully we get some good regen to come through. If we get like two or three five-star regen, that would be absolutely brilliant, wouldn't it? But uh, I'm not sure when they're going to come through other than at some point in November because that's when the screen told me it was going to come through. For the game, though, against Volna, I, I think we are going to stick with that 4-4-2. I think we just give it one more roll of a dice. We've got nothing to play for, so we may as well see how we play with it in the final game of the season as we look to... Start to think about tactics for next season. And that two-week period of international break went by really, really quickly. We've had no youth intake come through yet. So we'll have to sort of keep going through November until that youth intake comes through. But in the meantime, here is the game. And I don't really want to change too much, although Moses is apparently quite tired. So I feel like we take him off and move Radzibov over and then bring Tomello back on the pitch instead of Moses, who can sit himself on the bench in dead and then we'll have to take someone off the bench because we've only got three players on there I feel like Frantsev's got to come off the bench uh, because we're not really swapping the defenders around that much when we do change things around we change around the attacking part of play so that's the change that we will make for now but other than that the lineup is going to stay the exact same for the final game of the season so for a lot of these players, this could be the last time you see some of them. Moses, for example, we may have seen the last of him now because he's finished his loan. Dimitri, his loan finishes, so he'll go back to his parent club, and I doubt we'll see him again. There's some players down here that we've not ever played, and I don't think we'll ever see again either. Some of these players, they're probably going to get let go at the end of their contracts. And again, players like Abademi, is he going to stay around at the club? I've not been impressed by him when I've seen him play, although his current ability is pretty decent. That's the thing. <sighs> It's tricky. It's tricky to know, but some of these players you'll never see again. As kickoff is upon us, though, I just want to make it vitally clear to you that Shitty Gel will be here next season. We saw him sign new contracts. He's always going to be at the club, Shitty Gel. He is, I think I've fallen in love with him already. Like, what, just because of his name, he's not really done that much on the pitch other than he's, he's got average, average ratings. He's scored two goals, which is very good. But other than that, he's not done huge amounts other than just have a really really funny name and in today's game he's not really doing that much at all the first highlight is 35 minutes into it Znak puts the ball in the middle and Dimitri nods it in the back of the net to give us the lead as we go one up against Volner unfortunately 
Uh, if we look at the table once we see the highlight come through, which we can't see very well because the camera angle is not great, but Dimitri rising above the other defenders and nodding that one in the back of the net in the in the blizzard that is going on right now, minus four conditions. Uh, a quick look at the table though shows that uh, Slonim are currently losing, which is fantastic stuff. So we are moving up into ninth in the table as things stand. Baranovici doing us a little bit of a favour there as we give the assistant manager something to do at half time because I can't be asked to do it. Starting up the second half, uh, we are looking at the table and Rook have dropped down into second because Smorgan are winning, but Belshina, how are they? They're drawing 0-0 with Sputnik right now. So Belshina have to grab a winner to get automatic promotion. Otherwise, it's the playoffs for them. Only three teams have the ability to have a chance of going up. Obviously, two go up automatically, but only one team in the playoffs. It means this is a very difficult division to get out of. That's something we'll have to address next season. I looked at the pre-season preview um, before I started recording and Naftan at the start of the season were predicted to finish fourth. So the groundwork we've got, the groundwork we've got is a very good side. But for some reason, before I came into this club, they just couldn't win a game for Toffin. They were terrible. So, you know, the base of the squad is there. The, the spine of the squad is there. We need to just strengthen it a little bit. And next season, I can't really see any reason why we couldn't try and go for a top three finish. That's obviously going to be the aim for next season as... Changes need to be made. Unfortunately, both of our strikers not play. Well, actually, Dimitri's playing well, but Aliyev not playing so well. But we can't take him off because, unfortunately, Moses is... Uh, well, actually, I suppose we can take him off for Moses. That's the issue. And Temelo's not played well. So he's going to swap over with Radzibov. And we're going to bring Moses on for that right-hand side of the pitch. We'll give him a run out in the final game of the season. The thing is, the midfield aren't playing brilliantly well. So what I am tempted to do is put Znak there... Shitty jail there and bring Abademi on the pitch like that as a shadow strike. Let's bring one as a shadow strike, see what he can do and what could be his final appearance for the club as Shubko plays it up towards Dimitri, can't win the ball there, but we do retain possession through Radzibov into Shitty Gel. Shitty Gel up towards Demet De I'm not sure who that player's name was, I couldn't read it, but either way, Tamelo back to Shitty Gel. Aliyev on the ball out wide, plays it back to Polyakov, who we've not really seen much of and you know, when he gives the ball away like that, it doesn't really fill him with much hope. We need to look for more left backs for next season because we are really thin on the ground for full backs. We've got no recognised proper right back, to be fair, and we need to get a better left back in there as well as, again, he's just lost the ball there and they nearly equalised. Crazy clears that, was, clears that one off the line. And with 20 minutes to go, we are suffering a bit of an onslaught here, I've got to say. And again, they've just hit the crossbar then. They are really trying, Volna. Volna wants to try and get something out of his game towards the end of it as they... Appear to have quite a defensive formation, I would say, there. But we seem to be making the, the better use of our formation as right now as, again, perhaps I've gone a bit ambitious with having another attacking player on the pitch. Perhaps I should have tried to settle and try and defend nicely to consolidate the 1-0 win. But as the clock ticks down, it looks like we are going to finish the season off with a 1-0 win over Volner. Full-time, Naftan 1, Volner 0. We move up to... We don't move up because uh, Slonim won their game by the looks of things. They turned that 1-0 deficit to a 2-1 victory. They move up to 8th, Volna down to 9th, and we stay in 10th position. 5 points clear of Baranovici and 6 points clear of Kimmich. So I'll tell you what, and that's, that's not the worst result in the world, is it? You know, considering that we came in when we've been on a terrible run of form, and I feel like we have turned things around very nicely. We've only lost one game in the league since I came into the club, and then we lost one game in the cup against the team, who are actually, at the moment, winning the or the second now in the highest division. Uh, they've just dropped behind Torpedo there. Is baked for the first time since 2006. Haven't won a league title, which is pretty mental, but we lost a second in the top division, which is fair enough, I've got to say, and only 1-0 as well. But to only lose one game of the league since I came in after being on a terrible run of form all season, I think we've really turned things around here at uh, Naftan. I nearly said Kimmich then. That would have been very bad to get that wrong at the end of the season. Anyway, I suppose what I'm going to do is just sort of keep going forward for a, a couple of days to just see when this youth intake comes through because it's meant to have come through at some point as we've set a new record for six games and beat and fantastic stuff. Uh, Znak wins player of the season with Crazy coming second and Shubko in third, which is interesting. Of course, we've not been here the whole season, so we've not really been able to get used to some of these players and why the fans might like them so much. But well done to Znak, he looked very good. Uh, the season uh, review isn't fantastic. There's not really much to talk about there. Our stadium... Only 2% full. That is terrible. We'll have to try and turn that around and get some more fans through the gates next season. 
The board have upped my wage budget to 1.9k per week, which is very nice. Transfer budget is still zero, but we are still overspending on wages, so we do have to get rid of some players for next season. Club vision then, right. They've changed this slightly. I feel like at the moment, the club vision is... Well, it has been changed. I've not got, really got much of a say in it. It was, I'm sure it said sign under 22 players. That's been got rid of. It's now developed players using the club's youth system and play counter-attacking football. Work within the wage budget. Of course, I'll try and do that for my best next season. But now they're saying they want the playoffs next season. And I think we can do it. But it's a, it's a big ask. It's a very big ask. Apparently, they're looking to sell the club the board as well. So that might be quite nice if we get some nice rich investors coming in. Can we negotiate with us at all? Do we want to say anything? Do we want to add anything? All right, if we go to this season, um, can we add anything? Add competition at the end of 2021 season? No, we won't add anything like that. I don't think we can change too much. So I think I think we just leave it as it is, confirm that. We worked what the board wants us to do, okay? And uh, accept that club vision for next season. End of season team meeting then. We'll discuss the plans for that. And I'm going to say to them, I'm going to say we can get the playoffs next time. It's been a long season. Hope you'll have a good break. You need to come back fully refreshed, Clem, aiming to make the playoffs next time around. And actually, everyone seems happy with that. Everyone reckons we can get there. So at least there's some nice ambition from the actual squad. That's pretty good. As everyone's gone on to uh, the break for, for the end of a season. But... Again, we've not seen this youth intake come through yet. And we've only got a week left of November. And they're meant to play a friendly against my reserve team or something like that. So, unsure what happens there. Interestingly, all the reserves have left the club as well. Which is a little bit frustrating. Because I was uh, thinking they were going to stay a bit longer. And I was going to try and assess them all. But they've gone now. So, I'm going to have to try and find them all again. And try and... In fact, I'll probably look back in the footage of this video, actually. And just assess them from there with their star ratings. And try and find some of the better players. In the meantime, Smorgan and Belshina both won their final games of a season, which pushed Rook down to third, so they have to go through the playoffs, whereas these two sides have gone on for promotion. NFK, one of the clubs that turned us down as the manager, ended up getting relegated, so I hope they look at that and think, gosh, we should have signed Tom instead because he was a better manager. I liked NFK as well. NFK had a very nice stadium. I thought I could do some bits with them, but they decided to go against me, so their loss. And finally, the new intake of youth players is here, and actually... Doesn't look too bad. We've got a player with five stars of potential, so that's fantastic. We could even maybe look to try and get him playing next season in the first team. Let's have a quick look at this before we sign off today's video then. So, Alexei, I'll try and work on that surname a little bit. But, of course, if you're on the Patreon, this is when we get started again. If you want some new players and you want your name in the game, let me know which one you want. Of course, if you want to sign up for the Patreon, sign up for the Patreon. There'll be a link in the description on top of the screen right now. But if you're on the Patreon, I'll post this. And let me know which players you might fancy. Of course, you may want to wait until later on down the seasons and, you know, when we've got better clubs and better players and things like that. Or you might want someone right now. I can't promise you that will take you on the entire journey, but that sort of assess yourself and where you want to be. And, of course, we'll follow your journeys either way. I'll, I'll keep updating you uh, on journeys and things like that. And, of course, we'll probably meet some of these players again in the future. But just to let you know, we probably won't take every single player with us the entire way around, just so you can sort of bear that in mind a little bit. But Alexei looks like a decent midfielder. Free kick taking of 14 looks great. Teamwork of 15. Decent physicals as well. I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. Aggression of 18. For a ball midfielder, you love to see it. So potentially Alexei could be in the squad next season. I'm a second best player. Another Dimitri, you love to see it, is a winger. So we could have him as a backup winger next season. I feel like we've got two good players here that we could potentially start to use. We've actually got a goalkeeper with two-star current ability, so he could be a backup player for us next season and obviously count towards the under-20 quota as well. So I reckon a few good players here. Anyway, that is the end of today's episode. I will be back tomorrow for the start of a new season, some new players, and we can start to really build our own Naftan squad and push for promotion. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have done, please do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I'll see you around. Have a good one. Goodbye.